also be done. There ought to be something on the effect that nothing else matters at the moment. My first thought and last thought should be Christ. next to you that can understand and can agree with you like precious faith our goal is to serve that king pushing through my day just to get to the moment or to the point where I can have peace among the saints of God. If I can't find it anywhere else, but when I come to church, I know there's peace. I know there's understanding. I know there's the manifestation of God's presence. haven't seen nothing yet. Experience what you experience. I'm telling you, we have not yet to see the fullness of Christ while we're here. I'm just talking about while we're here, not when we go to see his true essence in glory. But while we're here, there's still more that God to do and show us. So, the scripture, Psalms 100, starting at the first verse. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye not Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. Thank you, Jesus. Serve the Lord with gladness. That word really sticks out right there. It's also translated as worship the Lord with gladness. Same thing. Become a bondman to the Lord with gladness. My life as I serve is my worship. It's so easy to come and just praise the Lord, but is my life full of worship? My life full of service to the King of Kings? Do I go out through my day and my actions? Does it reflect how I am in contract or in negotiations or in serve or to, to the king? Can we see that? Because it is expressed day by day, day by day.
day by day. Yeah. Let us just take a moment and allow the word to seep into our hearts and into our minds. That we grow to the knowledge and the truth of who Jesus is. I serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you, Jesus, for gladness. I'm happy to serve and put my life aside, my thoughts aside, to allow Christ to lead me day by day. Because everything that he is in charge of is complete and perfect. I feel that. Complete. As I serve God, he leads me to make me complete and perfect. That's why I have to be glad. I, I feel you, Sister Missy. I understand what God is taking us through to make us complete. Opportunity before I start singing praises to just reflect everything that I'm going through. I'm glad to serve the Lord Jesus because He is forming and making me complete and whole in Him. Jesus, serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah, Jesus. May not understand it. May seem heavy. Heavy weight. God is forming us to be like him. There's nothing more exciting than that. Jesus. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. before we come before the people of God, we are always trying to um, humble ourselves before the Lord, or I'm trying to humble myself before the Lord, but also um, I love to sing about the character of who God is, and um, I always want him to be the centerpiece and the focal point um, of every song that we sing, so the words that we're singing are very important. And the way we present ourselves is also very important as well. And so on my heart today was just the love of God, how loving he is, how he continues to provide and protect and to cover us, continue to assist us through um, this journey of life and how he's just, he's just very loving. And, um, and he commands us to love one another. And so 
I, I want to spread love on this morning. I don't want to spread COVID. So if you came with the person, I'm going to ask that you give them a hug and say, I love you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. And it's so easy to love. Amen. You can also give air hugs. Amen. like the love of Christ, hallelujah. It gives us to love beyond people's actions and the things that they do and they say. It allows us to look past their faults and to see the soul, to see the person, and for us to be able to love on them and, and witness to them, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise because he's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus. I really love you, Jesus. I really adore you, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, if you mean it, say it from your heart. Oh God, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we need you, Jesus. We need you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need the Lord, hallelujah. Because there's nobody like him and his love is sufficient and it's enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. Put your hands together and help me sing on this morning. Hallelujah.
if you really need the Lord, if you need his anointing, if you need his love, his presence, let's give him a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I need you, God. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Oh, we need you, God. We need you, we need you. We need you, we need you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to turn the service back into the hands of the pastor. But I just remember that God is a loving and kind God, and he is willing and able to work out every situation in your life. Amen. Amen. some praise right now in the house. Certainly, he is an awesome God. He is a wonderful Savior. And in him, can we put our trust. Thank you, Minister Thompson. Thank you, Sister Ashley, for leading us in our worship service. Certainly, we know that Without your input, without everyone magnifying the Lord and exalting the Lord together, we'll never come to that place where God really wants us to be, where we're united in Him, where you're unified in praise and worship in Christ. But the enemy is always trying to cause distractions, division, whatever he can do to stop the progress of what God's people should be accomplishing in Him the goals that we should set, the things that we should move toward. He's trying to stop you because he knows that there's something greater ahead. And so what you have to do is you have to learn how to fight through the struggle, through the challenges, uh, to know that God is still going to bring you out. He's still going to bring you through. And that he's going to do more than what you even imagined he can do. But if you allow him, well, there's no other power greater than God. Do you love him today? Do you love him today? Come on and clap your hands. Bless the Lord. Now, bless the name of our God. We don't want to weary your patience this morning, but we want to leave you with a word that's going to bless your life. So I believe that if you pray, believe that you ask God to give us something that's going to help us out of every low place, out of every dark place, out of every place where we find ourselves in despair or separated from the will of God or the things of God. He will send the word that will destroy every yoke, that will loose every chain. Come on, stand to your feet with me if you will. Word of God in the book of Acts, in the first chapter, as we move from the passion of Christ toward the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You will find us there. Starting at the first verse of the first chapter of the book of Acts, the first verse of the first chapter. Former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all the things, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So the day in which he was taken up after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For 
John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days. When, when that day, therefore, were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. As we bow our heads, Lord God, we thank you this hour for this word that was read, your word, that was read into our hearing. But certainly your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your word gives us strength, it gives us power, it gives us direction, it guides us into all truth and righteousness. And so, Lord God, we depend upon your word to come in and to bring clarity in our lives and help us to know what you desire of us as followers and as vessels of the Most High. Help us to surrender our all into your hand this hour, we pray. For you know our frame, that we are frail, and that we are made from the dust. So we can do nothing by our own power, but we are depending solely upon you. So this hour in you, we know that we move and we breathe, that we have our very existence. So we ask you to bless these, your children that are in the house. Send the word that's going to change, Lord God, their situations. It's going to cause them, Lord Jesus, to go from every low place the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Help them to trust in you, Lord God, for certainly you're able to do the impossible and work wonders. And so we praise you now for your bountiful blessings. In Jesus' name it is our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If I were to take a thought this morning, it would be follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. We look here and the Apostle Luke, this book is accredited to him, begins to write and give an account. He begins to write an exposition concerning what Jesus had begun to do and to teach. He writes unto this, they believe, a Roman leader who was of great authority. And he wanted to share with him what was transpiring as he walked through this life in ministry with Christ. As he served those who God had given unto them and to the apostles to share the gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. As he wrote unto him, he says, I want you to know that we're not doing anything on our own or by our own power or by our own design. We didn't pull this out of the playbook of Peter, or James, or John. And we didn't come together and conspire and come up with a plan that could change the whole world because that's not something that we have within us by ourselves. But this thing that we are sharing with the world, this gospel, has come from no other than the creator himself. The giver of life, the one that provides power to the weak, strength to those that are weak so that they can be strong in him. I want you to know that we're only carrying out, we're only following in the path that God has already laid out for the believer, and for those that would share the gospel with lost men and women everywhere. But there are those that need 
to be taught and to be brought to a place to where they could understand that God uh, did not leave them here to just die in their sins and to perish in eternal darkness and damnation. But that Jesus made a way for us to come out of our despair, for us to turn away from our transgressions and to turn back to him. So if we're going to do anything, if we're going to share anything, we're going to make sure that it's built off the foundation of what Jesus has already begun to do and teach among his followers. And so because of this, we believe within ourselves and we are confident, as our brother Paul writes in the book of Philippians, of this very thing that he which begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so here, Luke, as he continues to write, says Jesus was taken up. But although he was taken up out of the world, the physical manifestation of who God was, God incarnated in flesh, although we saw his body ascend into the heavens on the cloud. We want you to know that he left for us an instructor or a counselor or a guide, and that is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost provided commandments that we were to follow. Matter of fact, while Jesus was here, Jesus told us, as John writes in the 14th chapter, around the 22nd verse or 23rd verse, and Judas says, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answering unto him said, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom my Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Now what you have to understand is that it's necessary for you to have the Comforter and the Holy Ghost in your life. Because the Holy Ghost has come in his name. And he has come in his name to teach us all things and to bring all things to our remembrance. And so how can we live out the life that is pleasing in the sight of God if we don't have the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside? Jesus said, if you keep my word, I'm going to come and I'm going to abide with you. Me and my father are going to come in to your temple, which is your body, and I'm going to live and make residence with you and dwell with you. And I'm going to send you a comforter. And that comforter is going to instruct you in righteousness, in godliness, in holiness, and the things that the enemy tries to take away from you or choke out of you or try to uh, cause you to wither and die. God said, I'm going to bring it back to your remembrance. Because if you can just remember what God has already done for you in your life, you will gather strength. Somebody tell them hallelujah. hallelujah. 
And then he goes on to say to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. So after he suffered, after he endured such abuse, after he allowed them to hang him on the cross, after they wounded him in his side, after they whipped him all night long, after they jammed the cross in the ground, after all of these violent acts upon our Christ who knew no sin, he still showed himself to be God by these infallible proofs. By appearing and disappearing for 40 days among those that believed on his name. And then the Bible said he didn't just leave them after appearing and disappearing, but at the end, he brought them together again. How many of y'all know that God never leaves us scattered when he wants to bless his church? Matter of fact, he says, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not do what? Prevail against it. And so God made sure that they were unified and that they were together and that they were in one place. And when he stood there, he began to speak of them concerning waiting there until they are baptized with the Holy Ghost. He says, it's not going to be many days from hence. So what I want you to do is stay together. What I want you to do is pray together. What I want you to do is just honor my word together and remember that I told you that the comforter is coming and I'm not going to leave you uh, scattered and without strength and without an assurance that I'm able to do the impossible. And so while you are waiting, I want you to know this, that I'm about to send you something that's going to change your life forever. It's going to give you boldness. It's going to give you courage. It's going to help you not waver and be tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine, but it's going to give you soundness in the Word of God. And so while you're waiting, I want you to know that I'm not going to leave you without strength, but when the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall have power to be a witness in my name. God doesn't need individuals uh, going around trying to save folk because, uh, amen, saving is the job of our Christ. Amen. God don't need you to go around trying to heal folks because healing, amen, comes from the Lord. Amen. God doesn't need you to try amen to stamp out confusion because if you get people to place their mind on him, amen, their minds will then come in line with perfect peace. And so it is not our job, amen, to try to facilitate, amen, this grace and this mercy, amen, that comes from the Lord. Rather, it is for us, amen, to be a witness and to tell the world about a Savior and a God that never fails. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the best way to do this is not through your words, amen, but the best way to do it is through your example and your lifestyle and your daily worship unto the Lord. And so, Lord, I present my body as a living sacrifice, amen, one that is holy and acceptable unto God, which is my real reasonable service and as I present myself unto you I am putting myself in a posture that says Lord I will submit I will yield and I will obey your word and not only that but I will follow you wherever you want me to go whatever you want me to say I want to be in a place and in a position amen that allows me to surrender my all unto you. And so Luke is writing
writing um, to Theophilus, this leader, to let him know that my work is not in vain and my work is not structured after the design of men. I'm not walking in the will of my flesh. I'm not walking in the strength of my knowledge or my understanding. Amen. But rather, I know I have studied, amen, the disciplines of health. I know Luke said I am a physician by trade. And so I've studied, amen, the techniques of surgery and all of the skills of being a good physician. But what I want you to understand now is that I'm not resting in the skills of, of, of what I've learned as a physician. But this, amen, is about eternal life and eternal well-being and health. And so I am structuring, amen, my worship and my lifestyle after that which Jesus had begun to do and teach in the world. Amen. And he has showed us how to bring the enemy under subjection. He showed us how to go through trials and temptations and come out, amen, with victory and authority through the Holy Ghost. Somebody tell him hallelujah. In other words, I'm not going to bend because the enemy don't like the righteousness and the holiness that God has put around me. But rather, I want to be girded in his truth because when trouble come, when storms begin to rise, when trials come my direction and I am faced with something Something that is perplexing, I can lean not to my own understanding, but in all of my ways, I can acknowledge him and he will direct my path. Anybody in here know that God will direct your path? And when God is in the midst of your situation, it doesn't matter what the demons in hell say about you. It doesn't matter how how they come against you, you can rest assured that on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. It doesn't matter if all other grounds are sinking sand because I'm not sinking when I stand on the promises of God. The promise of God is sure. It will bring to pass everything that God has spoken out of his mouth because the Lord said my word will not return unto me void but it must accomplish that which I have sent it forth to do and so while you are looking defeated and while you are hanging your head down oh God I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help because my help is coming from the Lord. I'm not going to worry about how I'm coming out because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I said because the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I know the enemy is going to come against me like a flood, but when he comes, I'm going to get behind uh, the shield uh, of the Lord uh, and I'm going to cry out uh, unto my God uh, Jesus uh, thou son of David uh, have mercy uh, on me uh, I don't know about you uh, but when I need help uh, I'm not going to follow uh, the president uh, I'm not going to follow uh, the words uh, a man of the physicians uh, in society uh, be before I get into Christ. In other words, I may listen to what they say if the instructions are good, but first they must line up with what the Lord has said in his word. Somebody tell him hallelujah. 
<laughs> oh yes, I must stay in line with Jesus. Hey God, somebody may say, but if you don't, you're going to die in sickness. You're going to die in affliction. You're going to die in horror. But let me tell you something. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. And while you are afraid of dying in the pandemic, I'm more concerned about dying in eternity. And so I'd rather be connected to the life giving source, which is Jesus. I said because in him there is life everlasting. Somebody said in him I move. In him I breathe. In him I have my being. I don't know about you, but it is the anointing that flows from the throne of Zion that looses every chain in my life. Oh yes, I'd rather have Jesus. Let me follow you, Lord. And one day, just like he brought the disciples together and then he ascended into glory. If you follow him through this world, if you suffer with him, if you go through some pain, if you go through some hurt, but you stay focused on the prize of God, which is Jesus. I said one day, you going to step up on the wings of the morning. Somebody say, yeah, I'm not going to stay here forever. Even if I leave here by death, the Bible said, they that are alive and remain have to wait until those that are dead in Christ that are asleep rise first. So even if I leave by death, the Lord has promised me that if I'm asleep in him, I'm going to get up first. Tell the Lord, yeah, hallelujah. So I'm going to follow him through the storm. I'm going to follow him through the pain. I want to follow him. Whatever the world is trying to dictate in my life, I refuse in the name of Jesus. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Christ. In Christ. You're going to confront pressure by the world's system. You're going to face people talking about you harshly. You're going to face people mocking and laughing at you. They're going to call you crazy. And they're not going to understand why you walk in line with scripture. But I understand that Enoch walked so close to the Lord in the book of Genesis until he was not. In other words, you can walk so close with God. Hallelujah. That one day, they're going to look around and you're going to be gone. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Whatever he began to do and teach, I want to follow him. Until this life is over. Why don't you stand with me today? It's 
nice to be in a nice building. It's nice, amen, to have nice things. But all of these things are temporary. Temporary. The temporal, they pass away. But I need something that's eternal. I need something that's going to last. And the only thing I know that lasts is Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus got what you need. And if you follow Jesus, you'll never come up short. If you follow Jesus, you'll be more than a conqueror. If you follow Jesus, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. If you follow Jesus, praise the name of our God, you can rise above the enemy and still give him the glory. Yes, Lord, you can do good works and men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Somebody tell him hallelujah. hallelujah. As we come into worship. As we come into worship. It is our prayer that God will bless you all that are listening in. By the internet. Those that are in the midst of the congregation. It is our prayer that whatever you need, whatever you lack. Wherever you have fallen short, that God will come up and gird you and hold you and draw you closer to his side. That every demon that will be set to a flight, that your sorrow will be replaced with joy, that your confusion will be replaced with peace and soundness. And that your uncertainty will be replaced with a blessed assurance. It is our prayer that God keeps you by his power divine. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now for those of you that are still in our midst today, if you desire prayer, if you desire for us to touch and agree with you, over any portion of your life that you want Jesus to work things out for you. This is where you need to step out by faith, believing that God is able to do a wondrous work in your life. I said he's still a miracle worker. Anybody know he's still a miracle worker? Clap your hands and give him some praise.